Welcome to the Wide World of Esports, a show devoted to all things esports. I'm your host, Catherine Knorr. Today, my guest is Micah Medeiros, the owner of Empire Gaming. Our topic is Hawaii Esports Update, catching up with Empire Gaming and more. Welcome, Micah. Hey, thank you for having me, Catherine. All right, it's great to see you again today. I've uh, we've had you on before, and uh, yeah, we actually our our locations are right next to each other in Kaneohe. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, what's going on with Empire Gaming? Oh, it's been a, it's been a lot since we last came on. I think the last time I came on, uh, Empire Gaming just started, and um, it's been now a little over a year, and um, we've we've gone through some ups and downs. So, I mean, whew, I don't know where you want to start. Um, I guess. For now, I can kind of touch up. Uh, we did start in Warzone, right? When the last time I talked to you, I had brought some of my Warzone players. And um, since then, we moved away from Warzone. I only have one player still in Warzone. Um, the rest of them have gone on to do other things. And then uh, uh, we shifted our focus a little bit. Empire has a, a few things that, that we're working on. Um, the first thing we're working on right now is we have an all-women's Apex team. Um, our goal is to push the women in gaming um, and to help give them support. And so uh, we want to be the first organization to get an all-women's gaming team into Pro League, which is the professional division of Apex. Um, hasn't been done in North America yet, and um, that's, our, that's our goal right now. Wow, that's fantastic. Uh, how many uh, women are on the team? So um, Apex for Pro League is three. So three women and a coach. Um, we've gone through a few rosters trying to find what works, what doesn't work. Um, you know, the girls have to have good chemistry together. Um, they're going to play a lot. Um, uh, the girls that, that we have right now, I mean, they play two scrimmages a day. Um, they practice. So I would say at least six days out of the week, they're on the game, you know, anywhere from seven to eight hours in the day. So they're putting in a lot of time, um, we're bringing in coaches. Uh, we've brought in uh, coaches from all over. Um, we've brought in the 100 Thieves uh, coach. Um, we've brought in um, another coach now who is playing in the CCs. Um, he's been helping out. And then uh, we've had a few others. So it's it's been a, it's been a journey, um, but the girls, are, the girls are excited. All right. What are the age ranges of the girls on the team? Um, so for our girls, um, they're all in their uh, low twenties to mid twenties. Um, in gaming, as you know, uh, once you start approaching the the thirties, it's retirement age, um, and that's crazy to think, right? When you when you think of a job, is thirties is retirement age, but um, yeah, so so they're all in their their low to mid twenties. How do you recruit? Um, you know, that's, that's a secret now, but, uh, no, it's, 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 it's a lot of work. Um, so I do all of the recruiting right now. I do it all myself. And so, uh, what I've been doing is, uh, I kind of inserted empire into the apex scene and then kind of went from there, um, found some girls who were interested and we kind of built and, and got to know the scene a little better. There is a women's scene that happens. It's, uh, more community driven than professional so you know we're trying to put support there and then uh kind of meet some of our players uh in the women's scene oh all right well that's uh exciting what are um what are some future goals you have for the company uh so outside of that um besides the women's apex uh we always want to tie back to hawaii so that's our that's our big thing um outside of the the women's apex and what i want to do is i really want to put uh Hawaii on the map in esports. Um, that's kind of been a big goal of mine from the beginning. And rather than taking Hawaii to esports, wherever it is, you know, in the mainland or internationally, I want to try and get esports here. So, um, you know, I've had good conversations with Sky at UH. Uh, I've talked with Jordan at HPU, and and we've we've kind of talked about things that you know we all want to do. So it's been a really good support system to make that happen. Um, so yeah, we're trying to uh, gauge what our scene looks like right now. Uh, as you know, with esports, the online uh, gaming experience is not the best here um, because of paying issues and things like that. So really, our answer moving forward, in, in my opinion, is is we have to get gaming here. We have to get LAN events here um, to put our players on the same type of uh, level, if you will. So 
that's my goal is that I really want to get some uh, gaming events here. I want to get some LAN events running here. Uh, it's not it's not very popular right now. Uh, so I'm hoping to start driving that. So do you think that esports can become part of the part of tourism for Hawaii? So so that players will, you know, come here to play, but also to enjoy the beautiful environment. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I, I kind of look back and I think of the days when, you know, the Pro Bowl would come and things like that. And, um, you know, I know there was a lot of background things with us paying them to come and things like that. But with esports, um, it's so much so in its infancy still that we have the power to kind of build this, engage this and, and kind of point it in the direction that we want it to go. And so I think Hawaii can play a big role in that in in that one, it's it's Hawaii, right? Everybody wants to, to to visit, wants to kind of like see what it looks like, the beaches, and they see all these pictures. So, you know, why can't we host these these events? Um, you know, a good example is uh, they just threw the first ever uh, Warzone land uh, last year through Call of Duty, Call of Duty sponsored, and um, they went international. And so, why not get them to come here, right? Not why not make it the Hawaii event where all these players can come down. Um, enjoy the beach, push tourism, really, you know, shopping and all the money that they'll spend there. But also we can have an esports event, you know, throw it up someplace like the convention center or the Blaisdell or, you know, make something like that happen where we can have an arena that these esports players can go in and we can have a, a great event here. Yeah. You know, the, what I would do is I would <clears throat> try to partner with Japan um, mm -hmm. The reason why is if you look at the Honolulu Marathon, it attracts, um, you know, 15,000 people or so, and that's just the runners. And then you get their families. And they've been, uh, Japanese people have, who have been, you know, they've been coming here every year for the Honolulu Marathon so much that it has almost become a Japan event. Mm -hmm. And they also come for the Great Aloha Run. Uh, as well and you know i would think you could probably get um japan esports e interested in doing events here or coming here um i think it's it's a matter of partnering partnering with uh different you're targeting uh different markets and i think that japan market is probably a really good market what do you think about that no, it, you're absolutely right. And I, I think that um, with these international um, partnerships, you know, I, I'd i like to to talk with Sky uh, at UH about it a lot because he's very experienced with that. You know, he runs internships that do go to Japan. He's had internships that go to South Korea, right? He he does all these these um, internships with, with these international destinations that, um, you know, he could really... Uh, introduce them to Hawaii as far as esports goes, and and I think you're absolutely right. We already have the tourism that comes here, and they love it, right? And sure. why not why not bring bring events here where even more you know um, tourists, whether it be Japan or or even South Korea or wherever else, um, to come and and participate. You know, I think you could even get um, Germany. I think there are a lot of Germans that come, and and certainly esports is big in Europe. And, uh, you know, I, th I think there's a lot of opportunity there um, that can be explored. Now, with, um, in terms of UH and HPU, um, what do you see as going on, you know, with kind of collegiate esports right now, and um, how that's in, you know, kind of events that you see happening? I think, I think collegiate is, is, it's really blowing up right now. Um, collegiate is getting a lot of attention. Uh, this year at the esports awards, you know, they they made a whole uh, collegiate event for the the collegiate scene, and I think it's getting more and more recognition as as colleges are picking up programs to participate. And um, as we build collegiate and and these great programs, I think it'll be super important. And this is kind of where Empire kind of plays a a good part in it. Is that if, if I'm focused on the professional side, it kind of gives a gateway for collegiate players who have something after they compete collegiately, right? Is now maybe I have the avenue to go professional. And it really is kind of setting up like how a 
uh, professional sports would go or you know like maybe you play college football and then you go and you play in the nfl or or whatever i kind of can see it happening similar to where oh i'm gonna go play collegiate esports and then hey you know hawaii has a professional team let's go play for the hawaii professional team so i'm hoping that that that's something we can build Sure, sure. Of course, by the time they graduate from college, they're almost middle age. <laughs> yeah, we might have to uh, have a shorter old. time frame. <laughs> <laughs> so um, are there any LAN events that are uh, planned or coming up uh, uh, in Hawaii? Yeah, so we actually partnered up with uh, HPU. Um, they have their arena uh, down there. And um, we also partnered up with a few other uh, local uh, organizations. Um, but uh, I met up with each, uh, HPU, and I also met up with the Hawaii Esports Alliance, uh, Kaysen over there. Um, they've been a lot of help. And we're going to throw an Apex LAN event. Uh, originally, we had it slated for this month. Um, we didn't realize that the Apex Professional uh, League qualifiers are happening at the same time. So, oh, okay. we yeah, we went ahead and we moved it. So, um. The date is upcoming. Um, I will announce it on the Empire uh, social medias. Um, they'll announce it on the uh, Hawaii Esports Alliance pages. And uh, I'm looking at somewhere in January. We're just not sure exact date until we get the CC schedule for Apex, which is another qualifying event. Uh, we want to make sure that we can get these uh, teams out. And um, I think uh, 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 their varsity Apex team is already showing interest in coming out, which is cool. They've been doing really well in the collegiate scene. So uh, hopefully we'll get a lot of people out. It'll be totally free entry. Um, everything's covered ready. We're going to have giveaways. Uh, we'll have some prizes. It, it'll be a good time. All right. Fantastic. You know, we have a ninth island, okay? So I was just there, and I went to HyperX, and I got a little tour of the arena. And I was just thinking that... Um, what better for Hawaii to do than to partner with the, our ninth island? Have have you ever had discussions with Las Vegas um, or anyone there or at HyperX or anything about doing something in Hawaii? I have not. But what's funny is that um, I did just go to the Esports Awards and just so happened my seat, uh, we were seated in a booth and the person next to me is the owner of the Las Vegas Inferno, and um, he runs their organization there. So maybe we got something we could talk about. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would I would think that um, it goes both ways. I mean, we have a whole bunch of Hawaii residents who constantly go to uh, Las Vegas, but why not get Las Vegas people over to Hawaii and uh, uh, maybe bring some of the vibrant esports activity that's going on there uh, to Hawaii, because I know that Las Vegas is pretty big in esports. Right, right. No, you're absolutely right. And just talking with the, uh, um, with him, with the Las Vegas Inferno, um, and he was talking about some of the professional. They have um, a Las Vegas Legion, which is a CDL team. Um, they have a few others. They're, they're really growing in the esports uh, world, if you will. So, yeah, I think I think it would work. Sure, sure. Well, and what about sponsorship? Have you been able to attract sponsors for Empire Gaming? Are you looking for sponsors? So I'm definitely looking for sponsors. Um, I, you know, being very transparent with Empire Gaming, um, I, and with any esports owner, I pretty much put everything in, right? Everything is is through me. And, um, you know, sponsors are always a help, um, even for our events, even if it's just, you know, products from a sponsors to help get, you know, people out or, or whatever, you know, whatever it may be. Um, and I'm hoping with Empire, we can be the people to introduce local businesses into esports. You know, I'd, I'd like to see some of these um, smaller local businesses and not even necessarily monetary, but, you know, maybe we can put their business out for them or, or whatever kind of help we can provide to the esports scene. You know, there's there's a lot of people getting into esports, so why not get these local businesses involved? So um, to answer your question, yeah, we're always kind of looking at sponsors, but, you know, I'm very selective. I, I do want to support local. So, you know, we've been reached, uh, we've had companies reach out, um, mainland companies, uh, you know, more like apparel and things like that. But, you know, I really want to try my best to gear uh, as local as possible. And, you know, anyone who's interested in reaching younger people, which it can be difficult, you know, yeah. um, especially companies that, 
you know, or, or they, you know, they want to bring in people, um, consumers that, you know, are young and, and they haven't been able to find an avenue to target that market yet. This is a great avenue. Absolutely. No, it really is. Um, I actually had the privilege to go and check out the um, high school championships this past weekend at uh, HBU. And uh, Vanta was throwing on that event. And um, I was able to just go and sit down and enjoy. And they were playing a Rocket League. And, and the amount of, of kids that showed up, you know, to these championships to to play, um, I think Milani ended up winning it. But it was just crazy to see so many people watching you know watching esports it, it's it's it still blows my mind because you know um and you can probably uh vouch for this is that we've seen it from its from its smaller stages and to see it slowly starting to catch traction um even within our high schools here all the way down to our middle schools like it's it's, it's crazy do you think that parents are embracing it uh, more favorably um at this point um you know when you see kids engaging do you think that the parents are are you know get that this is what their kids are going to be doing and and uh, support the interest. I think it's it's starting to change. Um, you know, when I was younger, my parents they just looked at video games as you know, it's just a waste of time. I mean, that's how it was, right? You're going to go play video games. But I think now, as more and more people are establishing a career in video games and and maybe not even a player right some people might play and end up doing other things people become owners people become developers there's all kinds of different avenues and i think that's back where i i kind of point it back to the college to where somebody like let's say uh right they they have an esports program that not only brings up players but it's also people behind the scenes tournament organizers casters other things that you can do in the esports field so i think as parents start to see that happening more and more um they're becoming uh more on board and it's funny because when i went to the arena to watch this past weekend there was a um a mom and a dad sitting in front of me and, and watching them like celebrate as as they scored in rocket league it's it's such an awesome feeling to see parents support it yeah and you know so you talk about hpu and uh we know uh has attracted the um overwatch world championships and but what about UH West Oahu? Have you seen anything going on in their beautiful, amazing esports uh, venue? You know, I've heard of this venue. I actually have never seen it myself. Um, I haven't talked to anybody from from that side. Uh, but I, you know, I would be curious to see. I've I've heard things. Uh, I think you you were talking to me last time. Like it's a it's a really nice place, but I just I haven't had a chance to see it yet. Yeah, I'm surprised that they haven't really done much there. But, um, okay, and speaking about venues, okay, the you know, one of the big things on the news for years has been Aloha Stadium and the Entertainment District. Do you see that as a possible place in the future to attract esports events? Absolutely. I think if if we can have it... I don't want to say built correctly because I don't think there's a correct way, but if we can have it catered uh, to host esports, uh, I think we could attract a lot of events. You know, you look at um, a game like Counter Strike when they do like their big events. You know, it, it is international, but they they sell out like big places. League of Legends sells out stadiums. I mean, we could we could potentially be building a state-of-the-art facility to host these types of events we we have that power right now so i i do see it playing a big factor sure and you know whenever they have these kind of huge events it just like the honolulu marathon the economic impact is incredible to our island and to our state um yeah. so what do you you know, we, we've been in this kind of strange time in our world where we had COVID and that kind of shut down traditional sports. Esports e has been become bigger and it sort of is growing um, exponentially. Um, however, you know, I kind of wonder what you think about how it's growing post-COVID. Is it still continuing? 
Um, it's, oh, that's a really weird place to be. And this was a, a hot topic um, at the awards. Um, and so what I think happens, you know, is when COVID came through and esports was really gaining video games in general, you know, it was gaining traction. Um, a lot of businesses um, kind of inflated the, the esports scene, right? They, they came in, there's a lot of sponsorships, a lot of involvement by businesses that, that wanted to get in like, wow, this esports thing is taking off. Um, but what I think happened is um, when everything got inflated, you know, things from player salaries, values, whatever it may be, um, after we got through COVID and, and where we are now, I don't want to say got through, but where we are now, um, it's starting to settle. The dust is kind of settling. A lot of these bigger brands are now pulling out. You know, they're not getting the the big return they thought they'd get. Um, they were looking for quick returns. and. I think now we're kind of we're kind of in a you know they call it an esports winter right we're we're kind of settling, but I think things will balance and for the businesses and the esports organizations and whatever esports involvement that these people have for the ones that can kind of hold on through this that can manage well through this, uh, there's a lot of light on the other side. It, it'll it'll take it'll start to climb again. It's not to say that it's it's not climbing now. It just slowed down a lot. Things are balancing. People are starting to realize what salaries look like, what what the actual value of these organizations look like. Um, it doesn't look as high as it did during COVID, but it's just a balance. And once we kind of figure out these things, it, it, it'll be okay. Yeah, I think it's here to stay. It's just uh, kind of balancing out. And you know, during during COVID, the um, these. Uh, non-endemic advertisers they had big budgets and they didn't know what to do with them so they put the money into esports so you mentioned the um the awards where was it and what was the scope of the awards ceremony that you went to yeah so the esports awards this year it, uh, was in vegas so speaking of the ninth island it was in vegas um this is the second year they've done it in vegas and uh this year this past year they they topped last year um they moved the venue in vegas they, they made it uh, a little more uh, intimate um a lot of people you know we were able to sit like i said i sat next to the las vegas inferno owner and, and we're in like a booth and we we're able to talk and chat about things um you know it, it's a great event uh, not only is it just an award show where they're handing out awards to all these um, deserving players and organizations and businesses, but they also do the day before a networking event and they bring in a bunch of different um, businesses that are involved in esports. Uh, e it could be a peripheral business. They've, they've brought in Oakley. They've brought in a lot of these businesses to talk about what they look for, what, you know, what they're doing or where they came from. So it's a, it's a really cool event. So, Micah, when you were um, in high school in Hawaii or in junior high, did you ever think you were going to have a career in esports or gaming? <laughs> I I dreamt of it. Um, I I dreamt it. Well, okay. There was, it was just starting to take off. Um, I used to watch a lot of optic gaming and they were the up and coming thing at the time and you know, I wanted to be the great player. Um, did I ever think I would try and own an organization? No, not at all. Um, but you know, they say when you when you can't you can't do it, you gotta find something else or whatever the saying goes. <laughs> so <laughs> so here here I am. Um, you know, I I I would like to make this a a full time career and and be able to um you know bring some of my players down here and and. You know, get this really taking off. Um, it, it's a slow, slow and steady road, but uh, yeah, I'm excited for this. What advice would you give someone who's interested in having a career in esports? I would say, uh, depending on what you want to do, the very first thing is is well, really, it's going to take some time. Um, you gotta be patient with it. You know, you're gonna have to if you want to be a player. You're gonna have to practice a lot. If you want to go and own own your own organization, you're gonna have to meet a lot of people. Like it's gonna take time. Um, it's not something you can just turn on and and start doing. Um, in a sense, you can start doing it, but to actually get to the point to compete professionally or to um, you know, be really involved, um, you just you just can't give up and 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 put in that time that it's gonna take. So for Hawaii people, do you think that it's important to network in the esports industry with people in Hawaii, um, outside of Hawaii, or both? It's it's definitely both. 
and and I can say this firsthand. Um, you know, I've I've met a lot of the Hawaii gaming scene, and and in you know, I love it. You know, everybody in Hawaii, so they they all have that that aloha spirit. You know, and they're all so nice and so friendly. Um, and when you go and meet people in the um, scene outside of Hawaii, you know, they're not all like that. And and so, you know, when you go and you network with these people, um, you really learn different things from both sides you know from from the hawaii scene they all understand the struggles we have with let's say something like pain but you may go and talk with somebody who's not here they don't understand that so i think it's super important that you network with both sides so that they can understand what you're trying to do and where you come from and then also the people here can can teach you valuable lessons on on what kind of struggles or things that they're trying to overcome within esports so both sides are very important you know, Hawaii people, if they um, talk to people in certain places in the U.S. or if they talk to people in Africa or different countries, they're going to find out that they also have a lot of problems with ping. It isn't just Hawaii. So, um, and they have a lot of a lot of economic challenges. In fact, I, I at the Esports Trade Association uh, conference, Esports Next, that I went to in Chicago, um, I met a guy from Sri Lanka, and he's been on the show as a guest. And think about that island. I mean, you know, there are other island islands like Malta and stuff where they have some of the similar issues that Hawaii does. So, you know, we are not alone. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely no it, it's it's crazy and what's crazy to me too is that like when you do go and network outside in the mainland or like just even at the awards when they ask you like oh where are you from I'm like oh you know we're esports org and we're trying to make it out of hawaii and they're like hawaii you know hawaii has like esports or it's like i mean yeah we, we do <laughs> so it's quite surprising yeah all right well mike it's been great to have you on here today and uh we've learned a lot about what's going on in hawaii and with empire gaming Thank you for having me, Catherine. I'll, I'll see you again, I'm sure. You got it. Um, anyway, thank you to our viewers for joining us today. We look forward to seeing you next time. Aloha.